Hello everyone, this is Dennis at Boulder Sounds. Welcome to the video demo of the Bluegrass Banjo Library. So what you're seeing in front of you is the contact instrument panel. And uh, notice that the blue keys here, where I'm moving my mouse, these are strings four through one of the banjo. And then off to the left, separated, is the fifth string of the banjo, which is actually a high string. So that's why we have it separated from the four main strings. So for example, if I play the fifth string open, we get this pitch. And then if I play it up here, which is on the first string in this particular example, we have the same pitch. So one, one thing just to get started with making convincing sounding banjo parts, or banjo players call them rolls rather than arpeggios, um, but where you have this ringing banjo effect, is uh, just hold down your sustain pedal and then play the left hand alternating with the right hand, just some simple melodies. And so the sustain pedal uh, creates a resonant effect. Um, so, you know, to sort of emulate the ringing of the banjo. Now, what if you have too much or too little sustain? That's what this knob right up here is set for. It says pedal sustain right now. It's at 2.5 seconds. So if I want to lengthen that to have more sustain, in my sustain pedal length. So now I'm increasing that up to 10. So there's a lot of resonance there. There might be too much. Uh, for scale passages, it might get a little dissonant. So you have control over that. Um, so that's a very useful feature that we've put in. What we have here in this column, it says position. This is the string position algorithm in the KSP script. You see fret, which says zero right now, and string number one. Now watch what happens uh, when I play my low D on the banjo, the fourth string. So it says, notice it says string number four. So we're playing on the fourth string, and the fret still says zero, meaning we're down at the lowest part of the banjo. We're gonna use the open string whenever possible. So that is going to give you a brighter banjo sound. So I'm just gonna go up chromatically. Keep your eyes on the fret and string box where the mouse is located. So we're still on the fourth string. Now I've crossed over to the third string and you can tell the tone color has changed. Now I'm gonna continue up chromatically. Now I'm on the second string, which is a B note. The second string of the banjo is tuned to an open B. I'm gonna go up the second string. The moment I hit the D, I'm now on the first string of the banjo, which is what it's tuned open. Now from there, I would just continue straight up the first string all the way up to the highest sample note, which, I, as I recall, is the 22nd fret. Okay, so now I'd like to demonstrate a higher position. So it still says fret zero, so to change it, I'm gonna go over to the yellow key switches up here on the right, and I'm going to click on the F note, and you can see the fret now has changed to third fret. So now what's gonna happen is the lowest fret we're going to hear in this particular example will be the third fret. So we won't hear any open strings. So the color is going to be quite different. It'll be a bit darker. And now I'm on the first string and I'll proceed up the first string. So notice the string indication. We're using fourth string. So I'm still on the fourth string. Finally, I've changed to the third string. So from D all the way up to A, I'm using only the fourth string, which gives me, you know, quite a bit of a darker tone quality, at least in that part of the band. Okay, so now I'm gonna demonstrate fifth position, and I'm gonna show you a diagram uh, from a very nice manual that Bo Clausen has created and uh, to d demonstrate that. So to get to fifth position, I go up to my key switches, the yellow key switches, and I clicked on the F sharp, and as you can see, it says fret now equals five. So here's the fifth fret position illustration from the manual that Bo did, and uh, I'm just gonna trace my way up it with the mouse so you can see it, and then I'll play it for you uh, slowly so you can trace it, but we're gonna go from the fourth string open, which is here. We're gonna go up here all the way up the fourth string to the 10th fret, and then we cross over to the third string, cross the second string, three half steps, and then the first string, we'll follow that all the way up to the top sampled fret of the first string. 
So follow my mouse and listen. So here's open D, first fret D sharp, second fret E, third fret F, fourth fret F sharp, fifth fret is G, sixth fret is G sharp, A, B flat or A sharp. Here's B natural, and now all of a sudden my samples will cross over to the third string. Okay, and now I'm going to cross over to the second string. Just follow my mouse here. And that is an E note. So E, F, F sharp, and then at the fifth fret on the first string we have a G, and we just go up in half steps from there and so on, all the way up the length of the first string. So that is, again, is going to have a little bit different tonal quality than the third position, and it will definitely have a different tonal quality than the first position. So here's the sound of the fifth position. So that's a bit more muted. Position, let's go up to the 10th fret. So now I've hit the key switch in yellow here, you see the display has turned to 10. So uh, listen to the tone quality now. So it's almost muffled sound. And let's contrast that with first position again. You see, so you have a lot of uh, tonal variety to choose from. And also, by the way, I neglected to mention each string sample, strings four through one, as well as the fifth string, are sampled in five times round robins. So if you do a bunch of repetitions on these arpeggios, which you will, you'll get um, a different sample trick to five times, which will create a much more realistic sound. So what if I don't want to play in a position, in a zone box type position on the banjo, and I want to play up a string, like all the way up the fourth string? That's where the imposed string column comes in. So right here it says string four, and I have this key switch assigned to this E note here in red on the keyboard. So what happens here now is um, notice if I play up the first string, excuse me, fourth string, and I'm at zero fret position, it does change to the third string there when I get to G. But if I hold down this key switch, which imposes the fourth string's will on it to not change, I'll go up the fourth string as far as possible, so watch the string display up here where my mouse is as I play up chromatically. Still on the fourth string now when I went to G. Still fourth string samples. Still fourth string. Ah, I finally changed the third string at G sharp. Now it will continue on its way up to the second and first string. So, that way you have control of playing up the length of the banjo or playing in a particular zone. Let's go to string impose, we'll impose string two. So watch what happens in the uh, string display here. So I'm going to start with the D, which is on the fourth string. Change to the third string right there. Now I'm on two, and now we're going to go quite a ways up the second string. All second string samples. So all that's going to be a bit darker. And notice there I just did a little ringing arpeggio. All from the second string notes, which technically would be impossible on a real banjo. So you can get some certain effects uh, on the virtual banjo that you can't get on the real thing. There I go, finally up to the first string. So I've taken the second string quite a ways up the neck. I believe that would be all the way up to the uh, 17th fret. But don't quote me. Uh, we have the articulation column, and at the top it says string muting. You can turn this on with your mouse if you want, or you can use the key switch in green, which is assigned to G sharp there. So without string muting, uh, we have this sound, which is the regular articulation of the banjo strings. And with string muting, so it's as though the player has his right hand dampening the strings slightly. And you can control the degree to which it is muted below it. As you can see, it's set on 10 right now. And here's way up on 20, or 
the minimum value. Just only slightly moved. And if you want to set that back to its default value, you can command click on it on the Mac. Okay, so what are these other things in the articulation column? Well, we have hammer-ons, pull-offs, whole step slides, half step slides, as well as harmonics. Uh, I'll talk about the hammer-ons and pull-offs in a moment, but let me just jump to the slides. So the whole step slide, uh, excuse me, here we go, whole step slide. So we just hold the key down, it's in touch mode. When you release the key, uh, it will disappear. Simple two notes, so if I want the second note to slide, I'll just press down that key and you'll get a slide sample. Same thing with whole steps. You need a whole step slide. Um, and also the muting is, could still be on while you're doing the slides if you wish. For a slightly uh, muted slide sound. Okay, so now what, uh, what do I do if I need to control the speed of the slide? If it's not, That's where the slide speed knob comes in. So right now at 100%. And if I need to increase that speed to match the tempo of the song or approximately match it, here's up to 120. And I can bring that all the way down, probably about all the way down to 80 is uh, still quite musical and useful. Probably anywhere below that, it's using the contact time machine, uh, the audio will start to degrade a little bit. So that gives you a lot of flexibility and you can reset it to its default value if you wish. Also in this column we have a harmonic articulation and that is assigned to the C sharp on the green key and by the presets for different key switches which I'll explain later in the video so different uh, key switch maps you can put them in different locations on the keyboard but for now we'll go with the default setting so harmonic key again is a touch key and if I'm just playing uh, say a simple arpeggio I'll just hold down the harmonic key So uh, that's handy if you're doing a sequence, you play all your notes in just with a standard articulation and then you go back and let the sequence play again and just trigger that harmonic key on and off where you want some harmonics and you can do some things that physically would not be possible on a real banjo. Okay, now let me talk about the hammer-ons and pull-offs. Uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs are just guitar player and banjo lingo or slang for slurs or legatos, depending on what musical world you come from. Uh, so if I hold down the key switch in red here, you can see the hammer-on button is highlighted. And just to hear the hammer-ons, uh, they're kind of bland sounding by themselves. Uh, they're not interesting really at all. Here's what they sound like. So what you're really hearing is the left hand of the banjo player hitting the string uh, by f you know, forcefully throwing the finger down. Uh, and pull-offs are the same kind of thing, but they're a little bit sharper sounding. So you may be wondering, well, why would I want to use those? Uh, you use them in conjunction with normal articulated notes. For example, if I just play three notes, and I want to uh, hammer on the second note, or I get the second and third, let me try that again. Okay, or downward. And you hear that at a good speed. Um, it's actually quite convincing and it doesn't give the keyboard's type articulation sound. It that's makes tends to make samples sound a little bit phony. So here's a sequence or two so you can hear these in action. Okay, so going up and down the scale uh, with just regular articulation and then the second time we'll hear it with hammer-ons and pull-offs. The hammer-ons for going up the scale, the pull-offs for descending down the scale. buttons here on the contact panel you'll see the hammer-ons triggered going up and the pull-offs coming down on alternating notes. So it gives it quite a bit more lifelike quality. And now here's more of a uh, roll type example of pull-offs and some harmonics and you can watch the articulation column here to see what's being triggered as it plays.
Okay, here's another roll sequence. Uh, be misled by these very low notes here. These are actually the fifth string of the banjo G, just where they're mapped on the keyboard. Uh, the upper pitch, excuse me, the upper pitches are accurate. you'll see in the next example is uh, you see this B flat here and these are going to be key switches which will trigger uh, various slides and hammer-ons etc. clearer sound to it because I didn't have any sustain pedal on that. So here's the same thing with the sustain pedal down. And of course if you wish uh, you could pump the sustain pedal up and down as the harmony changes to whatever suits your taste sequence in G major pentatonic you'll hear it played with no extra articulations and then the second time you hear it you'll hear some hammer-ons and pull-offs and if you just watch the articulation column you can see what lights up as it occurs. We have effects a column here. You can just conveniently turn these on and off from this main panel. You can also go to the effects tab to, to edit them in more detail. And I'll just briefly show you that, but I'm not going to spend much time on the effects. Uh, so we have that. And then also here on main page, we have this drop down menu. We have a pitch bend page, which I'll talk about in a moment. And we have a key switch page with key switch variations to choose from and you can choose to have these in touch or latch mode. So notice when I click on variation number one, watch what happens to the key switch colors on the keyboard there at the bottom of the contact. So they've moved and uh, you can try out different mappings of these key switches to see what best suits your purposes. So that's a very nice feature that Bo put in. And uh, on the drop down menu here, we have choice between touch and latch mode. And one thing I neglected to mention regarding the key switch page is we have this key switch display over here, uh, which reflects the keys that everything is assigned to. And as I go through the various uh, variations here, you can see that that display changes re reflecting those key switches. And also on this drop down menu in the bottom right hand corner, at the very bottom we have an about page. So you click on that and you have this nice brief summarized manual on the features of the various pages, the main page, the pitch page, key switch page. So it's sort of a condensed online manual for your convenience. Pitch bend page, this is important because it's been so uh, beautifully done and it's very flexible. So we go pitch bend page from the instrument panel. And uh, what we have here is in this column a global LFO. So this is just your overall LFO. And as you can see you can set the fade in amount here with this knob, the frequency of the LFO, as well as the amount. So that's pretty straightforward. So now notice in the pitch bend here we have last note on button highlighted and what that last note played. Uh, so for example you can get effects like this. You see so the first note I played was not bent. And I can bring it back like that so you can get kind of pedal steel guitar type phrases. Or something like this. Also one cool thing about this is uh, when the bent note reaches its target, which is set here in your mod wheel settings, um, then the LFO will kick in. So if you don't quite make it to the target, it doesn't begin yet. You can see there's no LFO there, but if I go all the way to my 
put my mod wheel all the way forward, you hear the LFO kick in. Uh, I'll bring this up to 30% and make the frequency faster than it should be, just so you can hear it. You see? So you, you have uh, quite a bit of control over these kind of country twangy sounds. And also here we have control over the semitones in which the pitch bend wheel will change the sound. Change that with this knob if you wish to different amounts or you can link them together with the link on button and then they will change accordingly sort of in a mirror value to each other. And also in the pitch bend section uh, you could turn last note on, just turn that feature off and then you would have uh, the last note. It says pitch bend up is set to two semitones. Pitch bend down is set to one semitone, so it's still going to raise the pitch. So if you indeed do want it to bend the pitch downward direction, you have to change this knob to a minus direction. But since banjo players um, don't bend strings down, they only bend up, unless they're untuning the tuning keys, uh, that's the way it's actually done. So, so here's a whole step bend up, moving my mod wheel forward, and here's a half step up, moving my mod wheel backward, depending on how your controller is set up, of course. Okay. So just a brief word about the effects. I won't demonstrate them in detail, but if we go to the effects tab down here, and then you'll notice we have, uh, we're on the space page, which is the convolution IR. And we have this nice long list of choices from ambience to chamber, church to halls, to plates, to rooms, three choices of each. And you can adjust uh, various parameters. Uh, cool thing about these presets is you can make your own presets and then save them. And you can save them as a single preset or you can load them as a bank. So that's very convenient. And the, pre the, excuse me, the effects we have are space IR convolution. Uh, you also have delay, chorus, and EQ. And also on the space IR convolution page, if you don't want to use the IR convolutions, you can use this drop down menu and use contacts built in reverb algorithm. So now if you take a look, we have four columns, one, two, three, and four. These are evenly distributed amongst these blue keys up here, which is where you're going to play the loops from. So if we just take a look at column one, below it it says D lick one. That is the name of that particular loop. And we can talk about focus, etc. in a little bit. Uh, and that is loop number 10. And you can uh, scroll through your loops with this loop knob if you want, or you can use the green key switch is below to scroll through uh, in real time in your DAW. But for example, so uh, here's D lick one. Okay, so uh, if I just want to audition some different loops uh, assigned to that D key, and these are major loops, as you can see the button is highlighted below. I can also change that to minor. And you can scroll through your various loops using the knob just to see what you like. And when there's no loop, it says no loop. So this is a collection of 11 loops. Uh, for example, a Foggy Mountain Breakdown. Okay. One way I might use these columns, I'm going to just use the first three columns in this example. I have the first column set to a D lick, the second column to a G lick, and the third column to an A lick or roll. And uh, so that gives me a one, four, five chord progression. So here's the D unison lick. Here's the G forward roll. And here's the A high roll. Okay, so how do you trigger those in time? Well, if you're synchronized to a clock, we have this menu here which we can have trigger immediately when pressed down or next 16th note, next eighth, quarter note, half note, or next bar. I'll set it to next bar. And I'm demonstrating this through logic, so I need to have its, uh, its clock running in the background to demonstrate this. But hopefully I'll do this correctly. So logic is running, and I'm at 160 beats a minute. 
and trigger next bar. So here's the D lick. G lick. D lick again. A lick. And so on. So you can set up a, a chord progression that way. And you have four columns. And of course, these can all be changed via key switches. And uh, it's quite a bit more involved than what I'm showing you right now, but it's extremely flexible. And another little uh, fun feature you have here is this tempo times one button. If I change that to tempo times two, you'll have the roll uh, triggered at double speed. Or real high energy licks. So you may be wondering what the focus button is. What the focus button does is any key switches that are sent are sent to that particular column. And uh, I can change the focus in real time. This is very handy for working in a DAW. Uh, as you can see here, I'm pressing the red key switch and the focus button is moving across the four columns. So that can be manipulated in real time. Or what I could do, another option is to turn the auto focus button on and then as I play a particular um, a column, oh, better turn that other tempo off. Uh, you can see that the, you can see that the focus automatically moves with the loop, and so on. And also notice down here in blue, we have key switches which change the quality of the chord in the column from minor to major. And uh, you may be wondering, well, what if I want diminished chords? Well, we have a whole separate instrument in both diminished rolls and banjo licks. So just as with the multi-sample banjo instrument, we have the same effects arsenal set up over here. So you can do a very quick access to turning your effects on and off, if you wish, from this front panel. Or if you want to go down to the effects tab, you can edit everything in much more detail here. And we have the same setup with saving your presets or saving a bank of presets. So uh, it's extremely flexible, but that gives you a little bit of an overview of the setup of the loop instrument in contact. Now here's a quick example with some minor rolls. In the first column we're using D minor, second column is G minor, third column is A major. G minor, D minor, A major, G minor, D minor. So you get the idea there. Now, um, how do you end something like that? Well, what if you need just a nice straight chord? Well, you have two options. You could use the sampled instrument. And we've also uh, provided a bunch of strummed chords in other instruments, and I'm just going to very briefly show you those. And uh, what we have is low voicing, mid voicing, and high voicing of major, minor, as well as diminished chords in both long and short articulations, and each chord has two round robins. So for example, what we're looking at now, we have it set on major with this button, long articulation. And if I play this G down here, there's long strum. And if I play the next G octave, it's a mid voice of the same chord, slightly higher and even higher. So uh, let's say I want minor chords. Well, I can just toggle back to the minor setting. There's G minor. And of course, two round robins with each, so they'll sound slightly different when played twice in a row. Um, keep in mind, though, these chords are not designed for strumming, not for continuous strumming like down and up strumming on a banjo or a guitar. They're just designed for punctuation, just to put a chord in here and there, wherever you feel like you might need a realistic sounding strum. Okay, and then this button down here, we have diminished. And when we turn the diminished button on, the mi major and minor button automatically turns off. So we have a whole series of diminished chords. And uh, what if we want a long or short articulation? So it defaults to long, and then the this button toggles back to short. So if you want a very short, snappy strum. Okay. And we 
we still have the same effects set up as the basic banjo as well. So that'll give you access to some realistic sounding banjo strums. You can also create these uh, with some practice on the keyboard, uh, playing the sampled MIDI banjo. And everything I've just shown you has key switches assigned to it as well down here in the color coding on the keyboard. So I hope that gives you a good idea of what's contained in the Bluegrass Banjo Sample Library for Contact. Uh, another thing that's included if you might be a MIDI guitar player is a contact instrument that's set up for MIDI guitar especially. And the way that works is each string transmits on a separate MIDI channel. So each string samples are automatically mapped to the correct string and fret, and you still have all the five times around robins, etc. And you'll notice a lot of these key switches that were necessary before down here on the keyboard are no longer necessary, but we still do have the key switches for the different articulations, dampening and hammer-ons and pull-offs, slides and harmonics, etc. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch the video demo, and best wishes to you from Boulder.